What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another Tottenham update. The clock is ticking down to the end of the transfer window. The last 24 hours is around the corner. And um, there is quite a bit to still talk about today. We've obviously brought you the news today that Kulusevski and Bentacore, we got the here we goes from Fabrizio Romano. Um, let me just give you the rest of the updates as going into the last 24 hours. Let's start off with uh, Dejan Kulusevski because he has been... Um, flying to London. All the Spurs Twitter have been going mad, fly, tracking the flights and, and what have you. But he is in London now. Uh, the paperwork are all ready to be signed. Apparently 2,780 Spurs fans were tracking, tracking that flight today. And that was the most tracked flight today on um, Flight Tracker, obviously. The player did arrive at 8 p.m. And the, you saw videos of him in Turin saying that he's going to miss Juventus and he hopefully will be back there one day. But um, yeah, it's happening, Sim. It's happening unless someone yeah, jumps him from the airport. <laughs> you never know. It's happened before. Um, but yeah, very, very exciting. I'm excited to see him in a Spurs shirt. Obviously, I think he's an attacker we, de we desperately need and a position that we need. So yeah, I can't wait for him. I can't wait for the announcement tomorrow. And I think we're getting a good deal as well in terms of how much mm. money we're outlaying. And it's a kind of 18 month, 18 month loan, really, with only if things go really well, basically, is a, is it is it a um, definite transfer? So I'm excited. I am. Yeah, definitely. So the medical will take place tomorrow, I'm hearing. Um, in terms of Rodrigo Bentancor, um, his medical is taking place in Uruguay because uh, he is away with the national team. So I'm sure we'll see him uh, when we get back there. But that seemingly will get done uh, without him being at Hotspur Way. Mm. And it'll be interesting to see, maybe because, you know, these two deals, the, the initial outlay is only 5 million for Kudusevsky with the rest being later, and then it's 25 million euros for Bentancur. Um, that's 20 million plus bonuses. So it's not that much of an outlay. So maybe there is mm. a bit more money left in, if, do, if opportunities do arise uh, on deadline day. Yeah, um, even so, I, I don't really see us um, bringing in someone unless we get rid of someone. Uh, and if obviously we get rid of someone, there is that kind of wages off the book and potential money in as well. So um, there's both ways you can look at it. Like we haven't allowed lay too much. And if we're going to bring someone in, then use the money that we're getting in uh, to use as well. So maybe there's two streams of revenues that maybe we mm. could be using. Uh, but in terms of Tangi Undombele, Romano says that Undombele has arrived in Lyon to complete the deal on deadline day. Tottenham and Lyon are set to reach an agreement on loan. Uh, with a buy option, uh, which is the key point there. Uh, just a few details are missing. And Fabrice Hawkins says that Undombele will complete his Leon medical tomorrow morning. I don't know if you saw on social media, there are loads of pictures doing the rounds with uh, Undombele meeting the locals again out in Leon. Uh, so that one looks like it is going to be over the line by tomorrow. Yeah, maybe he just needs to be at a, a place where he feels loved again and maybe where he feels appreciated. Because at the moment at Tottenham, it's not just Conte, is it? It's, more, it's the other managers. That's happened he didn't do so himself any favours, did he? No, but it, maybe he just needs a new environment. He needs to go back to um, where he was performing at his best. And um, I wonder how much the, buy, the option to buy it. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming we probably still owe quite a lot of money from the transfer. So maybe there's a deal that can be done. Um, in terms of foregoing some of that money and them paying us not much. It'll be interesting to know how much that buy option is. I'm sure it'll come out, but um, it was interesting before Tottenham didn't want it and then uh, Leon were fighting for it to be included. Now it's been included. So I'm guessing it's a fair amount. I'm probably at least 30 million, you're assuming. Yeah, I mean, it all probably went down to how desperate we were to get him off our books because Leon were probably like, look, we're just not taking him unless there's a buy option. Uh, so I think our, pretty much our hands were tied and um, we probably had to had to put that in uh, to get the deal over the line. In terms of um, wages, what are we hearing about wages with this one? I think um, we're hearing it's going to be, Tottenham are going to have to pay a portion of it, but we're hearing, I think Leon's going to pay a majority. That's the latest we're hearing. Mm. So right. Go on. that's good. That's yeah. good. Definitely. Uh, let's move on to Brian Hill because we've got a here we go from Fabrizio Romano on this one. Brian Hill to Valencia. Done deal confirmed. And here we go. It's a straight loan, not including any buy options, but it does include an extension for one more year. So it's a six month loan with an extension uh, that Valencia can trigger. Tottenham have approved the deal. Medicals and official statements soon, which I imagine will be tomorrow. Yeah, I'm happy. Um 
that they haven't included a buy option, so it kind of implies that they want him back in the future. Um, but an 18-month loan also implies that they think he's nowhere near ready to be at Tottenham right now. You know, you don't put a player you sign for 35 million on an 18-month loan, potential 18-month loan anyway, if things go well in Valencia. They have the option to extend for a year. You don't do that if you're thinking he can next season be ready to like start games and be making an impact in the Premier League. Clearly, they think he still needs more time. And as much as I would rather it be in the Premier League, I still think it will do him good to be playing regularly, even if it's in Spain. And even if it means driving his price up and getting some money for him at the end of that 18th month loan, I think it's a good deal. And I'm excited to see how he does there when he's given regular game time because it's been very frustrating watching him get kind of minutes here and minutes there at Tottenham. And uh, when he does start, it's always in the second team and he's never really making an impact. So um, I think it's best for everyone and I think it'll be best for his development yeah, uh, getting this loan move. And hopefully he does well, Valencia. Yeah, I'll be keeping a close eye on him because I like the look of him. I mean, I like what he brings to the team in terms of his aggression, his fight. He's always giving 100%. So in terms of that side of things, he he looks great, but he just needs to grow into his body a bit. He needs to bulk up and he needs to, um, you know, just get to the physical grips of um, English football. If, if he'll do that while away in, in uh, Valencia, back in Spain, I'm not too sure, but I guess we'll just have to keep a close eye on it and see uh, how that one progresses. But... Um, let's move on. Let's talk about Giovanni Lo Celso now, because this could be a key one to keep an eye on for tomorrow. Fabrizio Romano is saying that Valencia will try for Giovanni Lo Celso. It depends on other deals. It's like a domino, but the midfielder is understood to be keen on moving back to Spain. Uh, so do we know what this actually depends on? Because Romano is just being quite vague there in terms of what it, it depends on in terms of the domino effect. I don't know. I don't know if Vidal are trying to sell someone. I'm not 100% sure. Um uh, if that, if, I don't know what that affects on, but um, maybe it affects on Tottenham bring someone in before. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's just weird. We, obviously, he will. He will, we're looking to get rid of him. He wants to go back to Spain. Uh, he rejected a move to Lyon to France because that wasn't the right move for him. So uh, I think Federer will be a good move, and I, that I think I envisage that will have an option to buy as well because I yeah, think he's another think so. one. I don't think he's, he's going to be coming back to Tottenham, unfortunately, and, and I think. It'll be one where we'll look down the line and thinking, why couldn't he have done it? I reckon he'll do well at Villarreal and back in Spain. And we'll probably be thinking, why can we have got it to work at Tottenham? But unfortunately, it's just been a sad case of not being able to get him on the pitch. And when he does, we put, we're playing him in too many different positions, not really finding his best position. And definitely this season, I think his performances have been way below par than they were uh, the past couple seasons. So when he has been on the pitch, so... I think it's best that um, we we just look. We've we've been suffering the effects of that ter terrible transfer window back in 2019 for a while now, and it's I guess we've hit hit, hit the boiling point where we just need to cut our losses. And if that's what Conte wants, and that's best for the squad, I guess we, it was time to bite the bullet. Yeah, it's a shame because we've always been big believers of uh, Giovanni on this channel. We've always yeah. talked him up. We've always said about his ability and stuff like that, but. I mean, it got to a stage this season where even when he was playing, um, he wasn't playing well, not performing well. And it was, it was hard to kind of keep um, kind of bigging him up and keep backing him, wasn't it? Yeah, especially when, you know, every time he's always going down with injuries. And then as soon as he gets back, you'll think, OK, now he's back from injury. And then it takes him time to uh, get back into the team. And then once he does, he picks up another injury. And it was like never ending with Lo Celso. And that was the most frustrating thing. Um, and then once his performances started to really deteriorate like they did this season, um, it became evident that it's, it's, is it ever going to work um, mm. as much as I want it to? And so I, same with Ndombele, as much as I wanted it to work, I was desperate for it to work because I really believe in, I believe in the quality of both players. I really do. I believe they'll go elsewhere and do well, but maybe the right players at the wrong time, unfortunately for them. Mm. All right, uh, let's move on to Joe Roden. Dan Kilpatrick says, as it stands, Joe Roden is expected to stay at Tottenham Hotspur, but uh, Dan Byrne has, is signing for Newcastle, so this might uh, leave an option for um, January, I mean, the transfer deadline day for a move to Brighton, um, mm. if uh, they fancy it. I mean, we did hear yesterday saying if Dan Byrne does le uh, leave to Newcastle, then it could create a bit of a domino effect in terms of Joe Roden going to Brighton, and it'll probably be a good move for him if it does materialize yeah yeah i agree with that and um i think you get premier league experience i reckon he'll play quite a bit in place of dan burn as well um in the brighton back three under a manager that had, had that nose and well so 
Um, I think it'll be a great move, and hopefully they can get it done in deadline day. There were some reports saying Brighton were waiting to sell Dan Byrne, and some other reports saying um, that they're not interested in Roden. I'm hoping they are, and hoping there's there aren't uh, they don't go for another centre back because I think it could be good for him. But I do get the feeling that they'll definitely want an option to buy if they uh, get him on loan because I don't think they're in the business of just helping out Tottenham for Tottenham's sake, are they? So yeah, but you know it helps them out as well, even if it's just short term. Yeah, I think they'll. I think they'll want an option to buy. That's my gut feeling. That with, with you know they're a Premier League rival in the, not not rival, but um, they're 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 a team who at this season they're playing fairly well, and I don't think they're they'll want to just loan a centre-back from Tottenham without the option to buy at the end of it. Yeah, but you know, it is the last day of the window and if they're short on defensive options and Joe Roden's just sitting there, even without a buy option, I think it's still a viable uh, one that could happen just to help them out in a short-term sense. Potentially. Um, but let's move. Let's talk about Deli Alley. Uh, the Daily Mirror saying Everton are still considering a deadline day move for the Tottenham midfielder Deli Alley, uh, which could be Frank Lampard's um, first signing as Everton manager, uh, maybe on loan. Uh, I, that, I can't see him moving in terms of a straight transfer. I, I imagine it will be a loan with a potential option to buy. And it's interesting if he does go uh, to play under Frank Lampard because a lot of people likened him to Frank Lampard when he was in his pomp, uh, Deli Alley, you know, with his late runs into the box and stuff like that. Do you see Frank Lampard maybe a person that could unearth uh, the old Deli back? Maybe. I mean, I wouldn't put it, I wouldn't say no. I think uh, Lampard as well, if you remember when he was manager of Bright, um, Derby, he um, did a great job with Mason Mount and with mm. uh, Harry Wilson in the attacking positions when uh, he did that. And maybe he can have the same influence in Delhi. But, but to be honest, I I don't see it happening just because they've just got Van Den Beek. And that's pretty much confirmed. Well, that's true, yeah. So if that's happening, do I see him saying signing another player in, in an attacking and midfield position unless... They get two of them, and maybe they, they need more quality in the forward positions, which I do think they need because they really only have uh, in the central areas like Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison playing up front, and in like obviously Sigurdsson, you know he's not uh, available, and um, who are, like they don't have too many attacking midfield options, so maybe they could go for both. But with um, having Van Den Beek there, I, I would say it's more unlikely that he comes as well. Mm, I'd agree with that, to be fair. Uh, moving on to Alvaro Morata. Jacob, Jar- Gary Jacob of the time saying Alvaro Morata is now expected to stay and not move on this uh, transfer window, um, which I don't really have too many problems with. I mean, I would have I would have accepted him on a loan, but it's not like one that I really wanted. No, exactly. Now, we've got, now we're getting Kulusevsky who can fill in up front if need be. Um, in a part, well, I wouldn't have him up front by himself, but in a part, he's like just another player who um, can be there. So now we have Son, Bergvine, and Kulusevsky who have all had a bit of experience in the central attacking role. The back, I wouldn't, I wouldn't force the boat to get Morata as a backup striker at this point, unless there's a really good opportunity for a backup striker. I think we'll just go with our options up front for, at this mm. point. Um, there are rumours of him going to Arsenal, obviously with the going to Barcelona. And that'll be interesting. I think it would be a worse transfer for Arsenal than it would be for us, if that makes sense. Um, because uh, at Arsenal, they really need a number one choice striker. We have that in Kane already. So yeah. bringing in Morata to number two is could be okay. But for them, to bring in Morata to literally be your number one striker because Aubameyang's going and Lacazette, you know, hasn't got many goals this year. Um, that's, and that would be a bad buy for them, I think. Yeah. I mean, who would you rather, Morata... Lacazette and Enketia, or just uh, Lacazette and Enketia. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. And, and the Enketia things as well is weird because they're rejecting offers for him when his contract is up in six months. They can't afford already, to let him go. They can't afford already, to. He's already said he's uh, not going to sign one. So yeah, I know. know you're right. They've they've. It's a weird situation. They they've let go of a lot of players, and um, in in January, a lot. Of, obviously, you could you would argue that a lot of them are deadwood, but they've let go of a lot of players, and they haven't really. Uh, been replacing it uh, a lot of them have they uh, uh anyone well they haven't signed they're, they're, at the moment they, they're down to 18 first team players so maybe they'll get the whole maybe they'll get their uh, second half of the season postponed we'll literally see. i think that's what they're playing for to be honest <laughs> i don't think yeah. they've realized the rules have changed um but yeah we'll see i think their squad is they're definitely depleted and to be fair they only they do only have one game a week from now to the end of the season so they could get lucky with injuries but if they do get a pick up like lack that picks up an injury I don't know what, like, they're, they're literally in Ketia for the rest of the season. And Lacazette's also... Lacazette's contract up at the end of the season as well. You're right. 
and he doesn't look <laughs> like he's signing another one. So they'll, I reckon they'll go big for a striker on deadline day. Um, I don't think they'll get one. Um, and I reckon they'll probably um, go with their options. And then in the summer, they'll definitely get one in the summer, I think. It felt like this transfer window, all their eggs were in the Vlahovic basket. And after the Vlahovic deal falls through, they don't have any any plan B or anything. Well, Weird it seems, one. You know, there's all there are murmurings of Isaac, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. Yeah. Look, we'll have to see. Tomorrow is another day and the last day. So everything is to be finalised tomorrow. Uh, but back on Tottenham, uh, Bissouma. Uh, there's some links to Bissouma today. Fabrice Hawkins says Bissouma could leave Brighton. Three clubs are trying to sign him. Villa, Tottenham and Man United. The discussions are intense. Brighton are asking for at least 45 million euros. I mean, it's yeah. it's a weird one, isn't it? With Spurs getting bent and We're still being linked to all these midfielders for deadline day. Um, according to George Bannister, he's not and hasn't been on our list for transfers. So take that as oh, you okay. will. Um, but um, in terms of Basuma, I obviously I like him as a player. I think he's a fantastic centre mid. But he had, like with all the stuff coming out with Greenwood, like Basuma has his own allegations up against him. And maybe this isn't the right until that's cleared up. Maybe it's not right to uh, go for him at this point in time while that's still hanging over him. Because who knows if, you know, if something bad happens. And also from a moral standpoint, you should probably just avoid that, I would say, for now. Mm. If, look, if he gets cleared of it in the future, maybe that's something you can revisit. But at the moment, it's not, I don't think it's worth the risk. Agreed. Um, Usman Dembele, Santi Auna says Tottenham target Undembe- uh, not Undembele, Usman Dembele will sign for PSG. Helena Condis says that Tottenham made a last minute offer for Usman Dembele, but the deal is too complicated with sal- salary and agents fees. And I'm hearing as well, I'm, I'm not even sure if the PSG deal is going to go through for Dembele, but that seems the most likely option for him. Yeah, I mean, it's no let's be honest, who's surprised by that update? No one. Uh, mm. We were never going to be able to pay his wages. So unless he was either taking a wage cut or, um, I don't know, was gonna, he's willing to be subsidised by Barca or something, uh, it was never going to happen, I didn't think. And it was also, I felt like, an unnecessary signing to put that much financial strain on us. So, um, you know... If it's not even that, like, on big, that on big wages. It's the wages that he actually wants in terms of um, in his new contract with Barcelona. That's the, that's the crazy thing. The current his current wages actually aren't even that much. It's like 150k or something. Yeah, but even that for a player who's been injured for the last two years, you know, it's it's a lot. I love, if you're talking about bringing a right wing back right now, and then you thinking all these wages and stuff, I'd say okay, you can push the belt out a bit. But for the, for that transfer, it doesn't never never seem right to do that. So, mm. all right, I don't, the yeah, one. no surprise, yeah. The last one is a feel-good uh, factor story, and that is Christian Eriksen, as he um, is on the return path to the Premier League. Sky Sports say Christian Eriksen is set to sign for Brentford on a deal until the end of the season. He has passed all the necessary medical checks and is fit to return to football. He is now on the verge of signing the contract to be to become Brentford's most famous ever player. Um, most famous ever player, wow. Yeah, I wish I, I wish we would have signed him. No, I think it's right. I think uh, it's, there's a, obviously a strong emotional connection there, but um, I think we're right to stay away for now. Um, as much as I would have enjoyed a, a player like Ericsson coming back, it'll be interesting to see how he does at Brentford. And if he does have a good six months, you know, he's um, he, he's only on a six month deal. And there's, uh, you know, unless there's an option to extend, he might be available in the summer. And if he does really well, maybe we can revisit that in the summer. But I think for now, it was probably the right call. How old is he? 28 20 no about 30 30 mm. Mm. all right well i mean i thought he could maybe from six months sign for us for six months and maybe he could do a job for us you know everyone says we're lacking creativity it could have just been a nice quick term short term fix yeah but we do you know i guess you could run through the me- it's just too much of a risk for me mm. to right at this point in time and i think brentford have taken up fair play to him I'm, I'm happy for him i'm happy for ericsson and brentford that They've managed to uh, get over um, what could could have potentially been a very uh, difficult medical examination and everything, and they've got through that, and they believe he's fit enough to play. And I can't wait to see him back on the pitch, to be honest. I'm really looking – I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on him at Brentford, that's for sure, see how he gets on. And I think I'll definitely have one eye on, on the possibility in the summer. Who knows? If uh, he does really well at Brentford and he feels like he still has what it takes at the top level, um, then – I'll definitely be interested in the summer. Hmm. 
All right. Well, that is the state of play. We're going into the last 24 hours of the trance window. We'll be back tomorrow morning for Good Morning Tottenham and we'll be in the studio up until the deadline, on, um, which promises to be a very busy deadline day tomorrow. Probably, you've got to say, we're anticipating the most busiest January deadline day in our lifetimes. <laughs> I do, well, I mean, I remember the de the deadline day where Robinho signed and Berbatov signed. For Spurs, I'm talking about. Oh, for Spurs, ah, we'll see. I mean, I guess they'll classify well, it's already as two deadline signings. day deals. I guess they'll, those will classify as deadline day deals. But we'll see what new stuff hops up. I hope we get um one or two opportunities. It'll be interesting to see what tomorrow throws. Apparently, it, it promises to be a hectic day. Yeah. So keep an eye on we are Tottenham TV. We'll be giving you updates throughout the day we'll be going live throughout the day as well so it's going to be a very busy day of content and we here will be bringing you the news first as and when it happens and i'm sure we'll be keeping an eye on brian daigle at hotspur way as well so um thank you everyone for joining today like subscribe and comment and as always come on these spurs, come on these spurs.